In this video, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've had about the books that I've recommended. I've had questions like, in which order should I read these books or study the content in these books? Which books are the most important to get? Do I have to buy these books? So in this video, I'm going to answer some of those questions and give you more details about the books so that you can decide which books to buy, whether you want to buy all of them or simply buy one or two of them or use Safari books online if you prefer using an online book service rather than buying the physical books. I recommend that you read this book first but if you're struggling with the information in this book then read this Python introductory book really good book to learn the basics of Python but it's not network focused it's just generic Python information then read Eric's book to get more information about API's and another take on network automation including APIs on Juniper and Arista devices and then read this book as a exam prep last minute revision of Python if you want to. I would also recommend that you get this book if you're struggling with SDN concepts and OpenFlow concepts. Chuck, a good friend of mine, is co-author on this book and I would highly recommend it as a book just if you're interested in learning about OpenFlow and SDN. You could just look at my YouTube videos or take the GNS3 Academy course if you prefer and save some money not buying these books. You could also, of course, get a Safari Books Online subscription. A lot of people find that really useful, including me. So rather than buying physical books, just get access to all of these books as part of your subscription. Now, I have noticed that this book is not available on Safari Books Online, so you may have to buy that physical book from Amazon if you can't find it on Safari Books Online. But that's my recommendations. I'm getting almost pulled away by these waves, but hopefully you found this video useful. So there you go, they're my recommendations. Use this book if you wanna learn the basics of Python. Use this book to get an overview of different technologies. Use Eric's book if you want to dive a bit more into details and see practical examples and as I mentioned Chuck's book is a good book if you want to learn about OpenFlow and SDN I wouldn't buy that book however if you are not interested in the details of SDN and OpenFlow it gives you a good theoretical foundation used by a lot of universities around the world it's a very good book though if you want to get into SDN and OpenFlow in quite a bit of depth this book once again is a good summary it's kind of like flashcards, gives you quick summaries and helps you perhaps remember stuff before taking an exam or if you just want to quickly reference something within Python. So those are my recommendations. Question that I've often been asked is which book should I read first? I would recommend this book if you want to start with the theory of Python or you're struggling with the basics of Python. I've recommended this book quite a few times. It's a great book that discusses Python, Git, Ansible, a whole bunch of network automation and programmability topics from a network engineer's perspective. So this is also a very good book, but some people may find that it's too much, too quick. So then I would go back to the Python introduction book if you want to learn the basics of Python. Eric's book is really good if you want to get into more details with APIs, you want to see practical examples, you want to extend your Python knowledge, really good book as well. Chuck's book is really good for SDN and OpenFlow knowledge and this book is really good if you want to get a quick taster of Python or you want flashcards or a quick summary of topics. Those are my recommendations. What would you recommend? Are there any other books that you found really useful? Any other books that you enjoy reading or have found beneficial in your Python and network automation journey? continue watching if you want more details about the individual books but I've now given you a summary of the books that I would recommend if you're learning Python 
or if you're studying network automation. So now let's have a look at the books in a bit more detail. Now in this example I'm using Safari Books Online, which is a great resource. If you don't want to use the physical books, if you don't want to buy a whole bunch of physical books, then this is a great resource. You have access to many, many books as well as video courses using a per month subscription or yearly subscription. Now if you're struggling with Python or you've just begun with Python, then again I recommend the Introducing Python book. This book is once again not aimed at network engineers. It teaches you generic Python. It starts out with a taste of Python, explains a bit about why you would use Python rather than another language. So as an example, why use Python? It tells you when not to use Python, explains the differences between Python 2 and Python 3, shows you how to install Python. So as an example, if we jump to that section, here it shows you how to install Python 3 on a Windows computer as well as Mac as well as Linux. So a lot of details shown here if you're struggling to install Python. But going back to our table of contents, chapter 3 talks about numbers, strings and variables. So again it's explaining the basics of Python. This book is not written specifically for network engineers. It's talking about Python generally. Explains strings in a lot of detail. Shows you how to use plus to concatenate. Shows you how to duplicate. Shows you how to split strings. Shows you a lot of basic information. Chapter three talks about lists, tuples or tuples, dictionaries and sets. So a lot of information about those topics. Chapter four talks about code structures if, else if, else, how to repeat with while, how to iterate with for, talks about comprehensions, talks about functions. It also talks about generators, decorators, namespace and scope. Chapter five talks about modules, packages and programs. Chapter six, objects and classes. And then chapter seven gets to mangling data like a pro. So a lot of detailed information here about how to format, how to use regular expressions, which you may find really useful, especially when telnetting or SSHing to a router and pulling back data from that device. Chapter eight shows you how to use file inputs, file outputs. So as an example, how to use CSV files, XML, HTML, JSON, YAML, talks about configuration files, talks about spreadsheets, relational databases. So as you can see, a lot of great information is covered here. Chapter nine talks about the web. So as an example, web clients, web servers, talks about web services and automation. Chapter 10 talks about systems. So We've got more information about files, directories, programs and processes, calendars and clocks. So as an example, how to use the date time module. Chapter 11 talks about concurrency and networks. So it discusses concepts such as processes and threads. Goes into even more detail. Talks about TCP IP, sockets, how to use SCAPI. SCAPI is great for creating packets and sending them into the network so you can create your own packet and then send it into the network and you could use that for hacking or for testing devices in your network and in the last chapter it talks about how to install packages using pip it talks about different development environments or IDEs such as idle PyCharm and IPython it talks about how to test your code it talks about debugging and other information so this is a really good book. I found this book really useful. If you're starting out in Python and you're struggling with the network programmability and automation book, then I would suggest that you get this book. It's a great book to use if you're starting to learn Python. Highly recommended. Now this book is once again one of the best books, I think, when discussing Python network automation concepts from a networker's point of view. It covers a lot of topics. 
So as an example, we start out with the rise of software-defined networking. There's a basic section on OpenFlow and software-defined networking. It's very high level. If you want to go into OpenFlow and SDN in more detail, then I suggest you get this book, Software Defined Network, second edition. Now my friend Chuck Black is one of the authors. He's a really experienced software developer. He wrote code for HP. His code is used in many, many devices around the world. So if you want to get more information about Software Defined Networking, OpenFlow, then this is a great book, used by many universities around the world. But if you just want to get an overview of OpenFlow and SDN, then this is fine. The second chapter discusses network automation. So why network automation? Types of network automation. It talks about evolving the management plane from SNMP to APIs. So why use APIs rather than SNMP? Chapter three talks about Linux. And this is why I like the book. It introduces a whole bunch of concepts. So we've got a section on network automation, and now we've got a section on Linux, talks about different distributions, explains the basics of how to navigate through Linux, explains networking in Linux. And then chapter four talks about Python, but Python in a network context. Now, some guys have said that this doesn't explain the basics of Python, and that's right. This is my recommended book if you wanna learn the basics of Python. If you're struggling to learn the basics of Python, struggling with concepts such as strings, variables, integers, that kind of stuff, then get this book. That's a great book to start out with when learning Python. But if you wanna learn Python from a networker's point of view, then this information is great. There's a networker spin, if you like, or paradigm on the Python discussions here, but you may find it too much of a leap or too much of a jump if you're very new to Python. So then go back to this book to learn the basics of Python. So a lot of good information here, talking about loops, functions, working with files, creating Python programs, talks about pip and installing Python packages, and some other stuff. But again, if you want to get into Python in a lot of detail, this is a good book to get. Get the Introducing Python book to learn Python, to get a really good understanding of Python. Get this book to get a networker's viewpoint of Python. Chapter five, data formats and data models. We've got YAML, XML, JSON, data models using Yang discussed in this chapter. Chapter six, network configuration templates, talks about Jinja, how to dynamically insert data using a basic Jinja template, talks about conditionals and loops, Jinja filters, and more information. Chapter seven discusses working with network APIs. This is of great interest to us as networkers talks about REST APIs, so HTTP-based APIs, NetConf, talks about how to use the Python requests library and the Python NC client library, talks about NetMiko, great libraries to use if you're a networker. Chapter eight, source control with Git, starts out with use cases for source control, the benefits of using source control, how to work with Git, talks about how to branch in Git, collaborating with Git. We as network people need to learn Git. It's gonna be very important for the future. Chapter nine gets into automation tools, such as Ansible, Salt, Stackstorm. Chapter 10 talks about continuous integration, and chapter 11 wraps up with building a culture for network automation. Additional information in the back of the book includes advanced networking in Linux, using Napalm. As you can see here, they're talking about Linux containers, LC, LXC containers, talking about Open vSwitch, how to use Napalm, which I really like. So another really good book. Okay, so use this book if you're starting out with Python, if you're struggling with the basics of Python. Use this book for a bigger view of network programmability and automation. It doesn't just cover Python, it covers other things such as Ansible, Salt, talks about Git. This is a really good book to use for the GNS3 exam. So if you're studying for the GNS3 associate exam, great book to use to get started. This is a great book to use as a resource. Now this book won't necessarily teach you Python. 
it says here, yeah, learn Python in seven days. I think you'll struggle to understand Python properly if you just study from this book. But I think this is a great revision book or a great little supplement. If you want to have a quick review, this is a great book. It's kind of like flashcards, I would say, for Python. So if you want a quick review of Python concepts before you take the GNS3 certified associate exam, or you just want to review some basic Python topics, this is a good book. It's a very small book. So as an example, you'll see it's a lot smaller than the other books, but it's a great little review of Python topics. So I would also get this book if you've got a bit of extra money. Don't get it if you're struggling, but as you can see here on Amazon in the UK, it's actually not that expensive. I didn't find it on Safari Books Online, so I bought the physical book. The next book that I would recommend is Mastering Python Networking. Eric has written another great book here. I'll hopefully be interviewing Eric very soon and he'll be able to talk about his book in more detail. But this book starts out with a review of TCP IP and Python. You can see that this book covers the intersection between Python and network engineering. So this book covers those two topics, which is why it's of interest to us. He talks a bit about the OSI model, client server model, talks about network protocol suites, talks about the Python program, so a bit of Python information, such as the versions of Python, operating system information, how to run a Python program, talks about built-in Python types, talks about Python operators, talks about flow tools, functions, classes, modules, and packages. So as you can see, there's an overlap here with some of the other books. Again, my recommended book, if you want to learn the basics of Python, you're struggling with the concepts of Python, is this book. If you want to learn Python from a networker's point of view, then this book is a great book, as well as Eric's book. So what he does in module two is talk about low-level device interactions, he starts using the p-expect library. He, before that, shows you how to construct a virtual lab using Viral. He talks about using Viral, he talks about using GNS3 and other virtualized environments to help you study. So as an example, Cisco DevNet and dCloud. Now in a separate video, which you can find on YouTube, I interviewed Hank Preston and I showed you how you can access a viral service for free using DevNet. But once again, he's talking about the p-expect library. He starts talking about Paramico. I personally prefer NetMico to Paramico, but here's some information about Paramico if you want to use Paramico. He then starts getting into APIs and intent-driven networking. So he mentions Cisco APIs and ACI. What's really nice in Eric's book is he starts talking about APIs on Juniper devices as well as Arista devices. So he doesn't just focus on Cisco devices. He shows you Juniper APIs as well as Arista APIs that you can use. In chapter four, he talks about Ansible. So he's got some Ansible examples here, which is also fantastic. So we've got advantages of Ansible, Ansible architecture. He, he mentions that Ansible is agentless as an example. Then he talks about Python automation framework beyond the basics. There's a whole bunch of information about network monitoring. And unfortunately, it's starting to rain here, so I'm gonna to have to end this video. But he covers AWS, talks about Git, talks about Jenkins, talks about test-driven development for networks. Okay, so the storm has passed. Uh, let me try and do that again. So going back to chapter four, Eric discusses Ansible basics, gives you a quick Ansible example, shows you how to install Ansible. He talks about the advantages of Ansible. He explains the Ansible architecture. He discusses YAML, explains that a YAML file starts with three dashes, he explains that white space indentation is used to denote structures when they are lined up, just like Python. He then continues explaining more about 
how YAML works. Then he starts talking about network modules, talks about local connections and facts, provider arguments, gives you some examples. He gives you a Cisco example here in the book where we've got Cisco devices in a host file. We've got Cisco IOS devices variables such as the username and password. And then he's got a YAML playbook. He talks about using the Python automation framework to get beyond the basics. So how to use Ansible conditionals, Ansible loops, templates, group and host variables. Talks about the Ansible vault because you probably don't want to store your passwords in a clear text file. So that's really important to know. Talks about include and roles. Talks about creating your own custom module. Then in chapter six, talks about security with Python, such as using Scappy to create or craft packets that you send into the network. It's a great tool that's available in Python. Shows you how to install that, shows you how to use it to, for instance, send ICMP packets into the network. Shows you how to sniff using Scappy. It also shows you how to do a TCP port scan. Then he talks about access lists, syslog, and how to search through syslog messages. And a really nice section is where he starts talking about network monitoring using Python. You may want to start using Python to monitor your network. So he shows you how to interact with SNMP, how to use Python for data visualization using, using the matplot library. So as an example, you can see that there's a graphical interface rather than just a CLI or command line script. Also shows you how to use Python for cacti. You've probably used or know about the multi-router traffic grapher or MRTG application. So why not use Python with MRTG? So he shows you that here, shows you how to install cacti. He shows you how to use Python with SNMP and interact with network devices. Chapter eight continues talking about network monitoring with Python. He shows you as an example how to create graphs. So here's an example with a viral lab and he then uses Python to create a graph of the network. He shows you as an example how to graph neighbor relationships using LLDP. So you'll be able to see your neighbor relationships as something like this. It also shows you how to implement flow-based monitoring using Python. In chapter nine, he shows you how to build web services using Python. Talks about REST, and how to interact with devices using REST APIs. There are various web frameworks. Django is very popular, very powerful. Flask is a lot easier to use, but is more limited. Talks about other web frameworks that you could use. So as an example, he mentions both Django and Flask here. And he mentions that he finds Django a bit difficult to extend. So he only uses the pre-built code. He shows you how to install Flask, how to set it up. So a lot of great information available just in this section that you may find useful. Chapter 10 is once again where he talks about AWS cloud networking. Talks about how to set up AWS, how to create a virtual private cloud, how to connect using a VPN. Chapter 11 talks about Git and how to work with Git. Explains how to use Git and GitHub and how to work with your code using Git. And then chapter 12 talks about Jenkins. For the GNS3 certification, I wouldn't worry too much about Jenkins, but that's something you may be interested in learning as you continue in your DevOps journey. 
And then chapter 13, he talks about test-driven development for networks. So once again, there's a lot of good content in this book. Eric's done a great job where he extends and gives you practical examples of how to use Python with Cisco, with Juniper, with Arista, shows you how to use APIs, gives you practical examples of how to use Python with network devices. So I would also recommend this book if you're studying Python, specifically as a network engineer. Let me know in the comments below which books you've found useful. It's always good to you know, learn about what others are reading about and have found useful. So let me know what you think.